Since June, the equity market has been trading in a range, giving analysts five to six months to assess if the Fed will accidentally trigger a recession from which we will find it difficult to recover. We think that if we had to take a stance on it right now, this recession is much more of an inventory-related supply chain recession and that it would pass quite rapidly. Although, as you may know, economic figures are so behind schedule this time next year, people may still be debating whether or not we are in a recession. We do anticipate that inflation and interest rates will drop dramatically during that time. Jeremy Siegel predicted that we will see 2% interest rates next year, which I found to be extremely interesting. I also believe that inflation below 2% and interest rates will surprise people. One market, the bond market, does seem to be hinting that this point of view is accurate. The yield curve has inverted by 77 basis points if you look at the 2s to 10s segment of the yield curve since bond yields peaked on October 22nd at 4.3% and are currently down near 3.5%. Considering the current level of interest rates, the inversion is once more exceedingly steep. Oil prices, which peaked at 130 on March 7 of this year and are currently down to 80, are among the most significant in terms of emotion. Despite the fact that there are numerous reasons for the oil price to recover, one is that OPEC is worried about the excess supply that is now available and has threatened to further reduce production. Two. China is beginning to stimulate, despite the fact that it is inconsistent from a monetary perspective. They are stimulating because there is an issue with zero. There are some indications that they intend to relax those restrictions, and if they do, the demand for oil will rise. Additionally, since the level of our strategic petroleum reserve has dropped below that of 1984, we must begin replenishing it with oil. Despite this additional incremental source of demand, the price of oil continues to decline. What interests me is how close to an all-time high the XLE, the S&P Energy Sector Index, is in spite of this. Consider that the price of oil has decreased from $130 to $80. In general, that index moves in lockstep with the price of oil, but not this time. It is obvious that it anticipates the very same factors I listed earlier to increase oil prices once more. The transition to electric vehicle is, in my opinion, happening faster than most people anticipated. So if we're right, that might not happen. And now that Uber and Lyft are starting to use more Teslas in their fleets, more miles are being driven in electric vehicles. Given that these Uber and Lyft drivers travel far further than we do in our personal vehicles, we believe that this will reduce the need for oil more than most people realize. Like all commodities, prices are set at the margin by incremental demand, and in our opinion, this demand will be insufficient compared to expectations. Our prediction from a while back was that the peak in oil demand will likely occur in 2019. Although it's possible, returning there would only be for a little time. As I've already reported, copper prices have decreased from $5 in March to $385. A handful of commodities prices have experienced a slight rebound during the previous month. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about investing. Let's return to the video. Since commodities prices are calculated in dollars and the currency has decreased, I believe that's partially to blame. Only two-tenths off its low from July and September, the unemployment rate remained at a record low 3.7%. Non-farm payrolls increased more than anticipated, 263,000 versus 200,000, exceeding expectations. On the other hand, if you look at household employment, which was quite disappointing, declining by 138,000, this is a normal way for economists to view the world. And there is a noticeable difference between household employment and non-farm payroll. Since March, there have been 2.7 million non-farm payroll employment added, or a little over 12,000 new jobs per household. Considering that, it should be noted that money growth has been dropping sequentially since March. 
I don't think it's a coincidence, because the Challenger layoff surveys other indices of employment that are pointing down increased by more than 400% in November. Normally, we only observe that kind of spike when a recession is present. The average work week decreased by a tenth of a point in the employment report itself, which is another clue. As this is a very consistent number, I take note of when it decreases. Basically, employers are claiming that because it was so difficult to find workers for these positions, they won't be let go for the time being. But since business is down, they may shorten the work week and reduce overtime. So that's also intriguing, and as you may be aware, the longer this divergence between non-farm payroll and household spending persists, the weaker I anticipate the economic indicators to get. As you may be aware, we believe that the cycle turned as household employment began to turn in March, and that this is when we entered a recession. It is likely that revisions will support this theory. However, the third quarter GDP did show an increase right now. Now, a significant portion of the cause was the collapse of imports, as businesses attempted to empty their shelves of inventories. That doesn't exactly speak highly of how robust the American economy is. While only a 0.3% gain was anticipated, average early earnings increased by 0.6%, pushing the annualized rate of wage inflation from 4.9% to 5.1%. The average hourly earnings are merely an average, but overall revenue when you measure together all R's is not as strong as the pay wage increase would suggest. So the feds are absolutely keeping an eye on this right now. Hope you have learned something from this video. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure to click the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for you to be updated on our latest videos. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more and be more financially literate? Click on the next videos we have in our channel, showing on the screen right now.